day and by the end of this month you didn't get anything no God didn't call me how does that concern me if God didn't call you am I communicating it requires teaching rats matters will stop bring egg and see what God will have it will stop because to study is a labor what did I call it it's a labor it will not just be done haphazardly so by, that's by the way quickly look up and in these days came prophet from where unto where look at what the prophet did next verse quickly we are reading down to verse 30, 31 quickly and there stood up one of them named Agabus they were prophet but one now and signified by the spirit that there should be a great doubt throughout that there, there will be scarcity famine all the world which came to pass in the days of Claudius Caesar then come on look at the world then the disciples every man according to determined to send relief unto the brethren which were where now look at me Geoffrey if I just stand like this God said the Lord from next two months there will be scarcity in Edo State because if I use your village now you get angry in Edo State and then we say ah we have brethren in Edo State I, the man who prophesied didn't tell them what to do come on can I say that again the man gave the word of wisdom about what will happen but he didn't tell them hey gather money together did he do like that now because the church had been taught they knew what to do yes, that was the importance of teaching am I communicating now scoop, can you go back to verse 26 Achinewo. let's get to verse 26 look at it we'll come back look at verse 26 what informed their immediate response what informed their giving the bible says and when he had found him he brought him unto Antioch and it came to pass that how many what were they doing? They assembled themselves together with the church. And what happened? They taught them and taught much people. And the disciples were called Christians first way. So after this teaching, prophets were there. And one by the word of wisdom said, look at what God is saying. There will be scarcity all over the world. As soon as he said that, the brethren said, they determined. They just said, no, we will send relief material. No pastor coercing them. Were they coerced? The Bible says they determined. No, take me back to verse 29 where we stop. I want to just stress a point because giving must be taught. If it is not taught, people will just slide into greed, covetousness, selfishness. And of course, you have generosity. You have the grace of God upon your life. The riches of his grace, they are there. You have the powers of what? What do we call it? you have it and I asked a question the other day each time you give how do you feel oh you are excited now where is this greed coming from where is this selfishness coming from he said pastor you don't understand I did it to some people they didn't appreciate but look chapter 6 verse 35 and 36 when you give hoping not to get back two of us so I'm not giving because I'm investing. I'm not giving because I'm doing trade by butter. I'm giving because I have the bowels of mercy. I'm giving because I have the riches of his grace. I'm giving because that is my configuration. By default, that is who I am. Am I communicating? He said then, the disciples, every man, according to his ability, determined. That is to say, all of them, they were not at the same level. He said, according to their own ability. A maker can give one million. Sister Nos can give two million. Brother Pabe can give hundred thousand. It was not for competition. It was according to the ability. It was not for title in church. Some people can give so that they have title in church. They give. I want to be an elder in this church. I want to be a deacon in this church. And I must induce pastor with my giving. That's a wrong motive. Am I communicating? Is anybody angry with me today? Let's continue. Let's enjoy it, man of God. Thank you so much. He said, then the disciples, according to the ability, sent relief unto the brethren, which were, which dwelt where? Question, were they brethren? Were they Christians? Can Christians have need? Is it sin to have need? It's not a sin. Oh, come on, talk to me. It's not a sin to have need. Now, now to have need does not mean God has left you. You know some people, that's why, that's why we have all these pseudo razzmatazz everywhere. He said, brother, you mean you see I've not gotten a job? 
there is evil foundation. There is something pursuing your great great grandfather. Am I communicating? Yes, no, look at it. Every man has his own ability. The church in Judea, they were poor. It was not a, it was not brother is well. Mm -mm, they didn't have. According to a man, he didn't they. Hello. Even the governor said so. He didn't. Don't go and speak it outside. For our international audience, we are just cracking jokes. Praise God. Next verse. 30. Can we do verse 30 together? He said, which also they did and sent it to the elders. So what they gathered, Barnabas didn't request for it. What they gathered, they gathered it and they gave it. Nobody told them, you have to sow, you have to give. No. Because they were taught. So help me look at your neighbor. Say you need to be taught to give. Otherwise, you will slide into selfishness. You will slide into greed. You will slide into covetousness. So there is a training required in giving. Now, pastor, why will you take a whole month you are teaching on the culture of giving? We can give now. Is it not? No, 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 no. Now, the same scripture talked. Okay, one minute. Let's do something again. Because the same scripture taught how to give. He said they give themselves to the Lord. You know why? The Lord gave himself to them so they can give to the Lord. What did I say? They gave themselves first to the Lord and to us, to the leadership. Now, why were they able to give themselves to the Lord? Because they realized God gave himself to them. 1 John 3 verse 16 and 17. Quickly, let's do something. Give it, you know, Father, Father, if it is your will. No, it is his will. How do I know it is his will? He gave himself first. Everybody read with me. One to go. Hereby perceive we the love of God. How do we perceive it? Because he laid down his life for us. What are we supposed to do? We now, auto, what is the Greek word for the word auto? Ophelio. It means this is our responsibility. Why? This Jesus laid down his life for me. I don't pray to lay down my life for others. No. In the token of his laying down his life, there is a responsibility in me to lay down my life for others. Am I communicating? So I'm not giving because I need to be led. I'm giving because I have been led. How was I led? Someone gave himself for me. The Pastor Barry, I want to wait to be led before I give to you. Shut up your mouth. Jesus. <laughs> what did Jesus do? Jesus already gave and we ought. Your leading is we ought. Everybody, what did I say? What is our leading? We ought. That's the leading. Ah, holy Baba Coco, holy Baba Coco. Mm, I'm waiting for God to talk to me. Eh, eh. God is I spoke to you in that my son laid his life for you. You ought to. Look at verse 17. How do we do this? How do we lay down a life for our brethren? Does it mean somebody is to die, we take his place? That's not what the Bible teaches. Look at, in context, verse 17. Look at it, in context. Everybody read with me. But, whosoever had what? So where are we supposed to lay our lives for the brethren? Material things. Everybody say material things. He said, this was good. And see it, his brother have need. And shut it up. What? No. I want you to pronounce that word where? His. So do we have bowers of compassion? Do we have the riches of his grace? Do we have the riches of his mercy? We have it. So we teach you, so you realize what you have, that greed is trying to submerge. We teach you so you realize what you have, what selfishness and covetousness is fighting. We have the riches. He said we have the powers of compassion. For him, how dwelleth the love of God in you? So how I determine the love of God is in your ability to reach out to others. It shows that I appreciate what the Father did for me 
in the same manner I'm reaching out to others. Am I saying something today? Look at your neighbor say you have a responsibility to lay down your life for others. You are not to allow greed. You are not to allow covetousness. You are not to allow selfishness. Realize something. Look at your neighbor say realize something. You have the powers of compassion. I have the powers of mercy. I can reach out. Am I communicating? Read it again with me. Give me two different renderings. Everybody follow me. Read another rendering. Quickly. We'll read verse 17. So, the way we lay that life is not that I go and die for another brother. No. That's not what the Bible teaches. Sister Faith, tap that brother in front of you. You are laying down your life for him. That he should concentrate. Read with me. Want to go. A someone has enough money to live. I love this rendering. The goods, King James said, NIT said, the good is money. To live where? And sees his brother or sister in need, but sh shows no word. Why should he show compassion? Because he has bowels of word. Look at your neighbor say, answer your name. What is your name? Bowers. Have, look at your neighbor say answer your name, answer your name. you have the riches of his grace look at your neighbor say answer your, answer your name kindness is in you kindness. don't allow selfishness don't allow, don't allow greed don't allow. don't allow covetousness rob you of your name who is the first to say amen yeah. give me another rendering are we following this morning so the believer must be taught there is a training in giving if we don't teach you you are last selfishness. It will be my, my, me, me, my, my, me, me, my, my, my. So if I, if I say everybody will be saying me, my, my, me, me, my, all here will be noisy. And that's how people who live that kind of life, they live very noisy life. What did I say? They live very noisy life. Check these politicians that are so stingy. Blow siren, do everything, but they are wicked. Sorry, even, pa even pastors, even members, okay? If you see some brother or sister in need and have the means to do something about it, it's just like James put it this way. He said, someone comes to your house and there is, he's hungry. And he said, eh, you mean you are hungry? Ho ribaba koko. Ribaba koko. Ribaba koko. I command supernatural food right now in your stomach. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Re lambano it. And I said, you be saying, I receive. Lambano it. Receive. He said, where is the love of God? Instead of praying like that, why not bring out what you have? and share with that brother. You know, when I was in school, we had a very funny brother in school. This brother came to school with small pots, small plates. Everything he cooks is only for his stomach. And the school, I'm talking about tertiary institution. In the school, they nicknamed him. You know the nickname they gave to him? Chop alone. Chop alone, die alone. That was it. Oh, chop alone, come, come, come. Chop alone, come. One brother in Uniben, watch me. Immediately, if he wants to eat, he will off the light in his room so that you think he has gone out. <laughs> Selfishness. You must not allow it. What did I? He will off his light so you think nobody's in the house. So he'll be eating in the dark so that you don't knock. That is not the spirit you have. What you have, you can share. Look at your neighbor and say, mark me, mark me. mark me. I must live according to my name. Where I refuse, remind me of my statement today. Am I communicating here? You see, husband and wife, this man is hiding, he's hiding. See, you are answering on that person's name. One boy, Uniben, those days, he was sipping Gary. And upon, upon seeing a sister coming, he carried the plate, flung it so that you go under the bed. As the plate was spinning to go under the bed, the thing hit the leg of the bed. And the thing bounced right in front of the door. As the sister opened, he said, I can day inside. This is an agari. <laughs> you know what is right? Stop forming whatever you have, enjoy it. There are people who eat salad, they may not be as fresh as those sipping gari. Be proud of what you have. Don't try to impress people. 
what you have, be willing to share with people. Who is the first to say amen? amen. Tap your neighbor and say, Pastor is talking to you. You don't have selfishness in you. There is no greed in you. There is no covetousness in you. Now, Pastor, why am I saying this? First Timothy chapter 6, verse 17. Quickly. Why am I saying this? Why am I saying this? Let me show you. You're already smiling because this is your nature. That thing does not resemble you. Each time you allow selfishness, you are not you. Check yourself. You are not you. Right. Let's read. First Timothy 6, 7. Team, quickly. Whoo. Are we still in church? Yes. Sister Chica, are we still in church? All right. He said, charge them that are what? So, can people be rich in this world? When you meet rich people, what should you do? Charge them. That is instruct them. You know why you should instruct them? Words can be deceptive. What you have that can be deceptive. It can make you swing into what you are not. So we need to charge you. That's why teaching is required. Am I communicating? He said, charge them that are rich in this world. That they be not what? Why? It is associated with words. When there is riches, people can easily swing into pride. They should not be high-minded. He said, you see this, my shoe? It's Varagasi. It's, no, it's, 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 it's Versace. It's Piacadin. And then the person is wearing slippers that has hole. And you are boasting before that person. You make that person feel, ah, it's not the same God that created us, isn't it? He said, charge them, tell them. Rebuke them. Actually, am I communicating? Rebuke them. Why? Look at what they said. No trust where? Is it a permanent thing? Come on. Is it a permanent thing? Let me shock you. I've seen politicians when they were in position, they were buying landed property. As they left, not up to two years, they have sold everything. It's not certain. It's an uncertain thing. But look at it. But what should they trust? In the living. Who giveth us what? All things. Is that a full stop there? Check it. Is that a full stop? So he's going to explain to us what that enjoyment is. Say, bro, I can't keep myself. Allow me to enjoy. Meanwhile, other people are suffering. So he wants to tell you the meaning of enjoyment. The meaning of enjoyment is not, I will eat until I will not have balance brought forward. You know what they call balance brought forward? Your stomach is like this now. He it says it's a sign of enjoyment. He said, We are big men. <laughs> now, why? They see. Balance from here brought forward. <laughs> Hello, look up. Look at the enjoyment. How should they enjoy? That they do. What is real enjoyment? What is real enjoyment? Oh. That's a real enjoyment. How do you feel that people who have risen in life, Oyema, Oyema, how do you feel that people who have risen in life? They rose out of your benevolence. How do you feel? You feel fulfilled. At that man there, thank God, I was able to reach out to him when I reached out to him. So what is the enjoyment? That you do what? What was the other word again? That they be rich where? So where is the wealth and where is the enjoyment? In others. Your wealth is not in you. That is, will be accumulation. Your wealth is what you give out. Can I say that again? Your word is not what you accumulated. Your word is what you have given out. Look at it. Ready to. So your being rich in good works simply means ready to distribute. So a rich man is not a man that has 10 cars packed in his compound. He says, Oh boy, when I enter the compound, see Bentley. See. Help me now. Ferrari. Help me, help me. Which other name? See what again? Mustang. See which one again? Cadillac. See Lambo. Oh boy, see Lambo. I almost die. If you die, what will... You don't need to die. You don't need to die. You have just seen a man who is not ready to distribute. What is the poverty of our country? Answer by this. What is the poverty of our country? People are not willing to distribute.
your enjoyment is not in your accumulation. Can I say that again? Your enjoyment is not in your accumulation. It is money misroad. For our international audience, it means misplacement of priority. Money word. It just went to the wrong person who does not know how to distribute. And the problem of our nation today is our inability to distribute evenly. There is inequality. What did I say? There is what? Inequality. It is not properly distributed. That is why some are holding on to what they have. Now, use another rendering for me. Use another rendering of verse 18. Everybody look at the enjoyment. The enjoyment is not when you put one leg on top of your table. Then you use two hands to hold chicken lap. He said, I'm enjoy That's not the enjoyment. So, there is a way human beings explain enjoyment. But there is a way the Bible explains enjoyment. Am I communicating? For human beings, your two legs on your desk, one hand with chicken lap, the other one with chicken lap. What do you say? Chopping life. You are chopping life. We'll call you chop alone. Can we read now? Tell them to use their money to do good. They should be rich where? And generous to those always. That is a communicate. I'm rich, I'm rich. It's not how big your tummy is. Your wealth should be in others. I'm rich, I'm rich. It's not how flat your tummy is. Don't say this pastor is trying to insult those. There are people who have natural, I hope you know. They have natural bloated stomach. I hope you know. It's natural. Their body structure is like that. So please, I'm not trying to be insultive. Just understand what I'm saying. Because of the way we define people who are rich in our country. Yeah? We feel when a man has protruded stomach, he's rich. Alright. Give me another entry. <laughs> are you getting what we are trying to explain now? Yes, Quickly. Another To do good, to be rich, where? Yeah. To be extravagantly what? Yes. So, who is a man enjoying life? That reaches out to others and that is extravagantly general. He said, Your giving is too much. It means you are too rich. Ah, in church, they need this. Oh, they need this. He said, yeah, am I the only one? I'm too, no, 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 no. If others refuse, step in. Do it. That is your wealth. Why? Verse 19. Verse 19. Join me to read. Come on. Is everybody following what we are saying now? Do we have stingy people in this house? If we have some stingy people, say amen. What about selfish people? Say amen. Some covetous people say amen here. Oh, nobody is saying amen. Everybody, read verse 19. Want to go? Laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come. That they may lay hold on what? Is it for, so that they will receive back? It's something supernatural. Something that stays forever. Something that endures. Something that is more permanent. Get back to verse 17 again. Verse 17. So charge them. So the rich among us must not oppress others with what they have. Your oppression should be in your distribution. Can I say that again? Your oppression should be in your what? In your distribution. I pastored in Bori, and I remember once we drove into the campus to see a sister. As I drove in my car, some young boys started shouting, oppressor, oppressor. Op you know the meaning of their oppressor? I've come to intimidate them. Maybe the girls, they were I. I've come to use my car to them. No, that's our pastor. And everybody kept quiet. Whatever you have is not to oppress others. Whatever you have, is to help others. Am I speaking to somebody here? Look at your neighbor and say, it is because of you pastor is talking. No? Those small, small stinginess, I'm uprooting them now. Tell your neighbor. Say those small, small stinginess. We're uprooting them now. Those small, small ones. Chai! Brother, if you had come yesterday, if you had come yesterday, 
just give everything out. Me were inside the house. As soon as the person lays it, ta. Am I the only one here? No. Can we read now? Shout him that are what? They should not be what? Why would he say this? So we'll skip to verse 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Let's check it. Look at it. Look at it. Verse 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. He said, And they that have believing masters, let them not despise them because they are brethren, but rather do them service because they are faithful and beloved. Partakers of the benefit, these things teach and what? Next verse now. So we follow. Everybody read. If any man teach otherwise and consent not to hold some words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ and to the doctrine which is according to godliness. It didn't stop there, so we we'll continue. Verse 4. His word is a proud person. Knowing that's what the proud person is. He doesn't know anything, but <laughs> look at the next. But doting a bad word and strives of whereof cometh what? What again? What again? What again? Evil surmising. Perverse disputing of men of what? And destitute what did the Bible say now? Supposing how many I accumulate shows how godly I am. See, Pastor Barry, you have been teaching you me God is with you. How come you don't have a Bentley? The God that cannot give you Bentley, that's not my God. I serve a rich God. Shut up. I think gain is godliness. But people were in Judea. They were serving the Lord. But they didn't have. True of us. We've had some pastors who come, came out to say, if you are poor, you don't resemble God. You are poor. It's because something is wrong with you. I serve a rich God. Oh, yeah. I serve a rich God. You know, as I was just flying to the United States of America and I went through Lufthansa and when we stopped at Zurich and as I was there, somebody walked up to me and said, man, I've got, I watched you on the program and the Lord said, I should just give, they gave me $6,000 and as I was sitting there, someone gave me the shoe that I'm wearing and I tell you, you can serve God I don't have. Brother, you can serve God I don't have. What did I say? It's a lie what did I tell you? How many of you here, frankly speaking, you have never had a need before? Raise up your hand. Oh, you have never had need. How many of you here, sometimes in your house, after speaking in tongues, Ziba Latoma Jage, Tumela, Sir, 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 your wife said, oh, We need to replace the Magi in the house. Has it happened to some of you before? And I said, Melekia, Melekia. When you finish, you go and check. Over. <laughs> it is not tongues that brings money. It is work that brings money. Can I say that again? It is not tongues that brings money. It is work that brings money. So when you finish tonguing, go and pray. Go and walk. Ekuma, ekuma. Rege, dege. I speak. There was a time in my life. The beans were boiling. There was no oil to change the color. After speaking in tongues, zuga, 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 nothing. No. It took someone to put 100 naira in my breastplate for me to buy oil those days. I remember once I had an accident. A neighbor of mine, wonderful neighbor, said, Ah, Pastor, you made your car was bashed by another man and they are trying to fix it. Pastor will be driving my car. She gave me her car. And I would drive to the office, come back. But on Wednesday, she will go to church. So it means I will return that car for her to go back to church. Is it okay? Yes. Now guess what happened? The first Wednesday fuel had reduced and it's not me or in me to return the car without, the, without fuel. And of course, I'm not sure that fuel in the car would take her to where she was going to. I stayed in the house. Oh God. Prayed and prayed and prayed because I didn't have money. Somebody came and gave me money. Quickly, before their church time, I bought fear into the car. Look at the way you are looking. You want to hear the end of the story. <laughs> and, 
<laughs> if you, if you, so, uh, <laughs> all right back you, you that's why you're in church you're attentive now if I, I was able to return the car another time again i remember they would soon go to church and there was no fear in that car i spoke in tongues prayed prayed believing that somebody will come nobody came i heard in my spirit if money does not come go out to get the money so i entered my car i just drove out to check on a friend ah pastor how are you doing thank you for checking up on me please can you use your fear your car? I say, eh. don't tie, don't boss God to a particular way of operation. Yes, That's what I'm trying to teach you. Yes. <laughs> the other times I was speaking in tongues. A brother came from America. You will be there. The brother will not come again. This time around, go and walk. Go outside. Look at your neighbor. Say, go outside. Go outside. Do, something. Do something. Say like we mean. He say, do something. Are we in church today? Now look at, we didn't finish the scripture. Can we all read it together? Everybody look up. Perverse disputing of men of corrupt mind. Who are they? They are destitute. To be destitute means they are poor of the truth. Selfishness is tied to people who are poor of the truth. Destitute of the truth. Supposing, what do they think? Supposing that gain. What should you do? Come on, read it. What should you do to such people? If I notice you are a stinko, I radite. I see from you. Because evil communication. What did I say? Evil communication. If I perceive that the spirit of stinko, my friend calls it stingies. The spirit of stinges is upon you. From such, what did the Bible say? Give me another render of verse 5 only. So there are people you withdraw from. They are destitute of the truth. Poor. They don't know. They think the more I have, the more people worship me. Everybody read with me. These people always their minds are what? And they have turned their backs on to them. A show of godliness is just a way. You see, those days, you know backslide? Yeah? That's the only backslide you should do. Withdraw. Next verse. Why? Why did they say that? Next verse. But godliness with contentment. What? Much cars, Bentley, Ferrari, 15 suit. You know, a man was boasting to me and said, Do you know I have over 45 suit? I was looking at him. And so what? How does he help me? Do you know I have up to 45 suit? If you see my shoes and so on. For them, the accumulation of those things is what they define as wealth. He said, You need to see my bath up. When I show, <laughs> all the guests, they started looking at me. I now know why you are doing that. All you are doing is to win people's attention. Am I communicating? Squeeze your neighbors and say, You don't resemble them. You have the bowels of compassion. Now, why was Timothy instructed like this? He said, charge them. Tell them. If they don't tell them, they will behave this way. Why do we do teaching? We do teaching so you don't fall into this trap. You see, there is a training required for people to give. The training is not to induce you to give. The training is to make you realize what happened that you ought to do. That Christ laid down his life, you ought to. Am I communicating? It's not an inducement. If I be a man of God, the first 10 persons to meet me here with 1 million, if I be a man of God, the Lord just told me, there is an anointing upon me now to enthrone you. America can I have three seats here. Put them here. You sit here, we enthrone you. We don't enthrone people in church. They do enthronement like the Olu of Wari was coronated yesterday. 
They do enthronement in the palace. Church will teach you. Can I, can I say that again? We don't enthrone people here. Tap your neighbor say, wake up in case they have been deceiving you. We don't enthrone people in church. We teach people in church. I say, sir, you want to be the next governor? The Lord said you must give something that will cost you something. America, bring my seat. Let him come and sit down. There is a governmental anointing upon me. And I will enthrone you here on this altar. Here is the grand and pillar of the truth. We dispense the truth. We teach the Bible here. It is not the place you put here. You want to be the next governor? Pastor, come, 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 come. You want to be in the next? Come, come. I want you to come. Tell the church what you will do. That's straight by Baka. Tell when this position comes. Because I prayed for so many people, they ran away. You will tell us what you will do. They said, Church, praise the Lord. We will tie this road. Hey! Uh -huh. <laughs> Something is wrong with us. Something is wrong with us. So I'm just being frank. Uh -huh. Yes, what again will you do? Pastor, You'll be going to for vacation three times a year. Church, did I not tell you that God is lifting me to another level? That three times in a year? Is that the gospel? Wait, no, is that the gospel? Is that what I am living for? Wait, is that what I want to live for? Three times in a year? I will go on vacation. Did I not tell you people? God is lifting me. My heaven is open. My heaven was never closed. Are you hearing what I'm saying? No believer has a closed heaven. Because heaven lives in you now. For the kingdom does not come with words. It does not come with observation. For the kingdom of God is within you already. So you don't need open heaven because you live in an open heaven. We need to break all those religious things. It's in you. Talk to me. Say heaven is in me. Did the Bible not say you are seated with him in the heavenly? That's why you are, you are not looking for it. But when you don't know it, I say, you, the Lord told me your heaven is closed. You need to sow a dangerous seed. I won't touch that seed. It's dangerous. Since he left your hand as dangerous, it can harm me. Because it's damn dangerous. No, you didn't hear what I just said. A dangerous seed is such a seed that you just bring a lion to this church. Say, Pastor, I'm giving you this. Lion is dangerous. He divorced. It's dangerous. That's what the dangerous seed is. He said, I have a dangerous seat for you. What is it? He just opened the door, lion comes in. And me and you only in this, and you have closed the door, he left me here. That's a dangerous seat. I will not touch it. I will check the exit door. That's a dangerous... You know, we use words, and we don't even... We don't think. What is dangerous can hurt me. Did, Jesus, did God give us dangerous seat? For God... Pronounce that so. For God, that's the emotion. The word so is the emotion with which it was given. He said, For God, so love. Are you seeing the emotion? The emotion is not in the love, it's in the soul. It qualifies the love. He didn't know maybe God so dangerously gave to us. No. It is so love. You see the emotion? That's how we give. We give with that emotion. That hereby perceive with the love. That he gave sacrificially, we can give also. We don't give dangerously, we give sacrificially because we are generous people. You didn't hear what I just said. We are just generous. We have the bowels of what? What do we have? So we just act it out. They think godliness is great gain. Uh, 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 godliness with contentment, that is great gain. So great gain is not an accumulation of wealth. Great gain is in distributing. Being rich in good works. Willing to distribute. Willing to communicate. Look at your neighbor, son. Uh, look at your neighbor in the eye. Say, neighbor. I told pastor about you. That's why he's preaching today. He has come to remind you of your true nature and how that you should respond. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, I'm talking to you. Selfishness is not in your DNA. Greed is not in your DNA. Covetousness is not in your DNA. Let me tell you what is in your DNA. 
you have the bowels of compassion you have the riches of his grace you have the riches of his kindness you are always willing to communicate you are always willing to distribute who is the first to say amen say I am a giver because I, refu- I receive first finally Luke chapter 6 verse 35 and 36 as we close and I'll see you on Thursday so far so good have you enjoyed our the whole of this month the culture of giving on Thursday was a blast for 45 minutes I saw the way pastor was teaching Pastor Barry was, boo, I was watching. Boo, boo. Jesus gave to, I quoted Romans chapter 8 from, from verse, uh, I mean 5 from verse 8. I saw him, that how God gave first. So our giving is in response to what we have received. Yes, our giving is not to receive. It's in response to what we have received. Am I communicating? Yes, Where did I quote? Luke 6, 35 and 36. So, consul. Let's read. But love ye your but your enemy must die this year. Eh? I said your enemy must die this year. But the Bible says what? Love your enemy. What again should you do? And do what? And do what? Do good. What is bad? If that mother that be showing you hatred, you respond to the need of that person. Love always conquers. Love always wins. Jesus said, just love your enemies. Do good. How do you show you love your enemy? By doing good. How do you show you love a brother? By doing good. Next verse. And come on, you must read with me. And uh-huh. hey, I'm sowing. Where's your seed? Bring your bring out your offering. I need to eat. Offering. All the problem in my family, I release it upon you. I put it in the offering box. You want a problem? <laughs> I use this money to solve it. No. It's not scriptural. Look at the scripture. When you lend, hoping, and your reward. Now, what if I lend, I'm hoping to get? Will my reward be great? See, let's not be reading the Bible in the eyes of pastor. My pastor say, read the Bible in the eyes of the Bible. You didn't hear me. See, my pastor said, when I gave, as I was giving out my car, I said, Lord, with this, I connect to a jet. And he got a jet. So you too, you are giving out your bicycle. Oh God, as I give out this bicycle, I connect to a kekena pep. Five years not even spoke, you have not seen. Say, this God is partial. <laughs> it will never happen. No. How many of you know Reverend Don Odunze? Many years ago, he came around. He said, I gave out my V boot with the mind that in less than one month, you know, I want to provoke God. If you provoke God, is it good? Why will you provoke God? <laughs> is it good to even provoke your brother? Look at me now. If I was about to provoke me, how will I feel? You see, I want to provoke God. I will provoke him. <laughs> Do you realize that the widow was not doing it to provoke God? She had generous. It was out of her heart. I want, so she, he gave out his V-boot with the mind that the next few weeks, he, he said one, six, one month pass. Six months pass. One year pass. You know a time coming and I said, God, what happened now? I have given he said, give. Is it scriptural? No. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? He said, one day he stood and saw a bike passing. Flagged the bike. Said, please take me to so and so place. He said, how many of you? You didn't hear me. One person was standing. The bike man was asking, how many of you? Because he's large, isn't it? He said, okay, I will pay for two seats. But this was a man who gave. He felt embarrassed. Now I'm not telling you what he said it openly. He felt embarrassed. But then he said he just realized that I'm not giving because I need to get something out. And that's the wrong teaching we have had. But look at the Bible. It's not what Papa said. 
It's not what Daddy Gio said. It's not what Mommy Gio said. It's not what Mother in Israel said. It's what the Bible says. We all must make up our mind to stick with what the Bible says. Yes. Help me tap your neighbor and say, make up your mind. Make up your mind. To stick with what the Bible says. Not what pastor he says. That is not scriptural. So what that means is that what my papa, my a man of God says that is scriptural, I stick with it. But if it's not scriptural, I walk away. Hello? Why are you people laughing? He said, but love your enemies and do good and lend hoping and your reward and ye shall be so you will not be the children of the highest when you give expecting to get you become the children of the highest for he is kind hey, come on how does God behave he is kind how, is, how does God behave he is kind and to pastor can you imagine pastor Barry was just well, he just needed 1,000 to find his way home. I gave my last 1,000 to Pastor Barry. Instead of him to say, thank you. He didn't. He just took it and walked away. That's wrong. But don't put your heart on his attitude. Am I communicating? Now, when you learn this thing, you won't get offended. Bible says offenses will come. Am I communi communicating? You won't get offended. He said, hold me hole has entered the side of you. It healed me. He couldn't say thank you. That's a wrong behavior. You could say thank you. But I want to ask another question. Christopher, does that thank you replenish the money in your pocket? Does it change the level of your finances? So I give because that's my nature. Look at your neighbor with a smile. Say God will use me. To meet needs. And I trust God. I will begin with you. I didn't hear an amen. amen. See you on Thursday. Someone has been battling cold. I come against cold. Yes, the cold that causes flu. I command it to dry up right now. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Your chest pain is gone right now. That chest pain is gone right now by the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father. There's someone here, you have a problem with your elbow. Your elbow, I bring healing to your elbow. Healing comes right now. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Celebrate Jesus. Hallelujah.